Hey guys, I'm back. It's been a while since I've done any kind of spotlight or review. And today we're gonna do something new that came into the shop. The RX-75. So what we have here is a brand new product by Wisemake. It's the RX Rulo 75. It's a great little device. It has, much like the iStick 100, which I quite enjoy, a magnetic battery door, which doubles as the fire button, a lock button up top, and what's really neat is the hidden door for the screen. It's quite a unique looking device. It has a a longer side and a shorter side. Obviously the longer side is where the battery goes, you see there, and the switch is up top. And then the shorter side is exactly this, I guess, where the chip in the 510 pin is. So the chip itself is not very big, or sorry, not chip, the board. The board is not very big, probably comes to about here. And then you have your 510 pin that sits right up in here. So not a very big device at all. And they tried to, it seems they tried to make it as small as possible as it comes with a, a, a smaller tank in this kit that we, we got in. I'm using the Jarvis right now. I didn't feel like using the tank, but I'll put it on just to show you. Call it the Amor Mini, Amor, A Amar, Amor Mini. There you go. So there it is. It's quite a, it's really, really cute. It's kind of almost stealthy to hold. I like it, I like it a lot. It comes with two drip tips, but we'll get into the uh, bird's eye view and I'll break out the package and show you what, uh, what comes in it. And I'll explain some things I like and what I don't like about it. And we'll go from there. Hey guys, welcome to the bird's eye view of the unboxing for the Rulo RX75 by Wisemech. Here we go, this is the box it comes in. Designed by J-Bo, inspired by, I can't even read that. <laughs> but anyways, I'll leave that here. You got your authenticity scratch check, so just scratch that off. Here is the back. We have a little description here. Uh, and then some standard configuration. Okay, so let's open this bad boy up. I'm sure you're gonna wanna see. Oh, here we go, some extra info. 75 watt input voltage, DC five volts. Okay. Let's open this bad boy up. There we go. And this is what you get. This is what you see when you first open. You've got some drip tips here. You've got the unit with, uh, with the armor, Amor tank, Amor mini tank hooked up to it. You have to pull that out. And let's see what else is in here. Get this out of here. Oh, this is tight. There we go. Let's see. Let's take a look at these tips, shall we? Oh, there we go. Nice and smoky, smoky gray. And we have a clear. Now I betcha you can probably stack these. You can. Oh, that's tight. I'll deal with that later. So, in here we have a the Amor Mini Quick Guide for your tank. And we have your user manual for the device. Let's see what's in the, here. A little brief breakdown, an overview. And here, okay, so the size, we are 87 by 22.5 millimeters and by 47 millimeters. So that would be 87 millimeters tall. 22.5 millimeters wide or thick and 47 millimeters wide. The thread type is a 510 spring-loaded thread. Uh, it says we should be using a 25 amp or higher 18650 cell. The outpo, uh, here we go, 1 to, 7, 1 to 75 watts resistance range and the temperature control goes from 0 0.05 to 1.5 ohms and 0.1 to 3.5 ohms in pure regular wattage or bypass mode. You can read that later. Let's see what else is in the box here. So we have a little box, nothing else in here. 
open this one up. Let's see. USB charging cable, very handy. And we got some other things in here. Oh, what do we have in here? So we have a door. I don't know if you can see that. It is a smoked, smoky door, clear door. So in here, you see the screen is here. You could change this door. So if you wanted to look at it as you're firing it, you just change it with this smoky door. There we go. We have your extra screws for the door, it appears, and a spare coil, which I have no idea what kind of coil this is. Nonetheless, comes with a spare coil. Now let's take a look at the device itself. Here we are. Magnetic battery door, a lot like the iStick 100. Quite clicky. We've got the lock button up top, which is very identical to the iStick 100. Doesn't move. Unlock it. Moves quite nice. You have your USB charging port here on the side, and it does fit in quite well with no restrictions. So I'll put that in. Plugs right in. Actually, you see there's plenty of room there. No restrictions on the door at all. So unplug that. This tank, we'll take this tank off. Let's inspect the device a little bit more. You can see, looks like a spring-loaded 510. It is a spring-loaded 510. And there's not much more you can see. Magnet here, magnet there, so it sticks quite nice. Here's your up and down buttons and your nice big screen here. So I'm going to pop a battery in here and we'll go through the modes. Now here I have a rewrapped LG HG2. I'm gonna pop this in here. Throw that in, obviously. Positive down, negative up. Pop that in. Look at the screen, see, and she turns on. Okay, now to get into the different modes, right now I'm in power mode, you click the fire button three times. One, two, three. Now it starts blinking and you use the right button, the up button, to go through. Bypass, temperature and nickel, temperature and titanium, temperature and stainless steel, as a TCR mode, and back to power. Now if you go backwards on it, you can cycle through other functions what mode you're in. Temperature mode, cycle through the wattage you're hitting at, the resistance. And there we go, back to power mode, which I prefer. Just hit the fire button and it takes you right back out again. Quite simple. Now let's take a look at the Amor mini tank that this kit comes with. It looks surprisingly a lot like the Solito, although it does not have any kind of a top air flow, not that I can tell. It has these little knurlings or markings here. I, I'm not sure what that for, it's a grip. It is a top fill tank. Just grab the glass and you spin the top. And there you go. Fill up down the side in here where your liquid would go. So we got a double O-ring seal, one on the inside here, which sits on the inner chimney, and one outside here on the edge. And the threading is on the chimney part, which threads in here. And it seems to... A little work. There you go. Once you get past that seal, it threads in really nice. Now, to change your coil, unscrew the bottom, hold the glass again, and it just pops out. Very, very low profile. The airflow ring does come off. And this is how you adjust your airflow. Right here. You can look at that. You see the airflow? The coil itself. Unscrew it. And there you go. It is a, an interesting size coil. I'm going to grab a a Triton coil and we can match that up and see. So here we are. This is an Aspire Triton coil. I'll pull it right out of the package. And we'll put that up side by side so you can compare the size of the coil. Here we go. And 
there you are. It looks like the threading is more in line with a, uh, an Arctic style of threading in here. So there we have it. There's your up and close. Guys, when you're putting, do not put this in together. As you can tell, I had a hell of a time pulling it apart and I ended up ruining this tip. I had to use a pair of pliers to wiggle this back out. So although it seems like it is stackable, uh, boy, it is a pain in the ass to get it back apart again. So don't do that. Okay guys, now that we're back up top, let's talk about the RX-75, what I like and what I don't like about it, or maybe more like what you should watch out for when you're using it. So here we are. I didn't bother using the Amor tank. Uh, I, I, am, uh, I am hard up and I love my Jarvis, so I am always using the Jarvis. It does actually look quite nice with any tank. The Jarvis is slightly longer than any others, but it fits really well just because of this this little spot right here. Now, what I do notice is when I'm using this device, if I grab it this way, I have to be conscious, to actually conscious, to put my pinky at the bottom so it moves my hand lower, so I'm not covering up the air hole, the airflow ring of my tank. Another thing you might want to be conscious of is how your tank is sitting when you screw your tank on. If it sits like this, you're only getting really good airflow from one side and slightly restricted as it comes through the sides in here. There is space, there is room for airflow to go through, just it might seem a little bit restricted. I didn't really notice that much of a difference, but just in case, I've always turned my airflows to be on the opposite side. There is another thing I found while using this device that I, uh, I didn't like is on the battery side. Now when you pull your batteries out, you want to be sure you push down to, to push in that little spring-loaded uh, contact and then pull your battery out. What I find is inside here, you got this little, this, this is your negative contact. I find the edge of this contact does pull on your, on the wraps of your batteries. So be very conscious of that fact that this is going to pull but if you're not going to be pulling your batteries in and out all the time it does have a charge port right here where you can plug into and just leave your battery in there it does fit rewrap batteries very nice no issues at all and there you have it I think this is actually a pretty cool device it fits really well I I seem to be using it more of a finger fire. I'm a thumb fire kind of guy, but as this, I'm, I'm enjoying the finger fire. You know, 45 watts, that's my simple vape. Another thing I really, really like about this uh, particular board that Wisemake is using, I notice, you look here, I am very low on the battery power. I have not noticed any battery sag, and I've used this for a couple of days now. I don't notice any battery sag until when I feel like there's not quite enough power, I'll take a quick look and the battery bar will be flashing. So that's when I notice, I guess, your battery sag when there is no battery life left. I'm, that's one thing I really enjoy about this is you're getting your full, full potential right till when the battery needs to be charged. And after that, then it's just, it's saggy, but that the battery bar is empty and you need to charge your battery anyways. But outside of that, I think this is a great device uh, for 75 watts. You don't, some, a lot of people don't need more than 45 like, like myself, but it, it fits any 22 mil size tank. You can't use a 25 or anything bigger than that. It's just not going to fit. But outside of that, I do love the locking feature. It's a manual lock, so it's not going to fire on you, no matter how hard that is, unless you break the lock. And unlock it, and it's just a simple light squeeze, and it's it really, really easy to use. Another great device by Wisemic, and I am impressed. For what it is, Way to go. 
I hope you enjoyed this little spotlight review of the RX-75, and catch you later, YouTube.